Welcome back to Bean and Bracket Factory and welcome to my latest video. Now this video is another video about this Austin 7 single seater special. I built this last year um, it took me about four or five months to build it and I took lots of videos of pretty much everything that I did to this car and I'm now going through all of that video footage that I took on my phone. Unfortunately I took it portrait not landscape I'm sorry about that but I'm going through everything and this video is going to be about is going to be about how I made this exhaust system, which is all made from scratch using bits of tube. Uh, so it's a bit of a montage of all the different video clips, and you'll see other bits and bobs along the way, some clues as to some of the other stuff that happened. But I hope you enjoy it and um, sit down, relax, and watch. So I'm about to start trying to make an exhaust system for this thing. So obviously this is the manifold flange, and I've bought a number of three bent bits of tube, different angles. I can sort of offer up and work out how, how it all might go. And it's all got to feed into this, this two inch pipe, which is quite chunky. I've made this wooden jig, which means I can line it up uh, at the right height so it coincides with the, the, the recess in the side bulge. Um, given that the recess has been made, I might as well line it up. Uh, so um, the first step, I think, is to try and make something which takes a two inch diameter, uh, sorry, one and, I think it's one and three eighths down to two inch. Uh, so I need some kind of cone. So I've made this cone out of cardboard and it's gonna be a cone that sort of sticks on there like that. Uh, so I'm gonna try and make this cone and the way I'm gonna make it, and there's a cat come to help me again, is by cutting a length of this tube just over 12 inches and cutting out this v-shape in the tube and then pinching using jubilee clips pinching it closed um, and then welding up the seam and then basically then finally trying to beat it get off cat trying to beat it um, so it's nice and round so that's the plan i'm going to try and um, make that cone first so using a cutting disc i've cut out this this um tapered uh, segment and now I'm going to clean up the join and I'm going to attempt to basically close this tube up. I can sort of just squeeze it a little bit, it's very, it's quite thick, 1.6 mil. Squeeze it up so I can make a cone out of it. So that's the theory. I might have to use a bit of heat to get that to happen though. Sometime later, um, I used heat and Jubilee clips and that didn't actually work so I, in the end I just used a device and just crimped it up in a vise so um, it's very difficult to actually bend it so they actually touch so I, I, I put it in a vise and I've put these clips on and it still needs to be knocked round but I think what I'm going to do now is tack weld the thing up um, and uh, and then I can get it in the vise and I can hit it with a hammer and file it and do all sorts of stuff. So the idea is to get a nice smooth tube and here's the cat again. That's all for now. Next up is a bit of welding, I think. So sometime later, and here we have a cone. So you can sort of just see if I um, rotate it, you can see the slightly dimpled effect where I welded it. Basically welded it and ground it down um, and it's now round pretty round uh, so the next step is I'm going to I've cut this three inch section I'm going to basically weld that onto there and the whole lot is going to basically sit sort of about there there-ish um, and then I can start thinking about well I've, I'm going to put this first elbow on first uh, number one uh, and I've got to make a round tube fit a square hole so I'm going to make some kind of former which is same shape as, as that but minus 1.6 mil which is the thickness so I can kind of form form the square ends that will slot inside there when I can weld them on so anyway next the next job though is to basically just weld that onto there uh, which is relatively simple although clamping it in positions can be a tricky bit anyway uh, let's see how we get on with that so this tube has now been tacked onto the end. Actually I had a, a threaded bar right down through the middle and I clamped this on and tacked it in place. 
I've run out of welding gas, so I can't finish welding it. But in the meantime, I've got this cut this rectangular, and I need to fit make a tube that slides over this as a nice sliding fit, which is going to be the connector from this um, collector to the main tailpipe. So it's going to slide over. One side of the tube will be welded, probably to this bit, and the other side will have um, slots in it so that you can have a clamp and you can clamp it into the to the tail section. So I'm going to basically take this rectangle, which is about five millimetres too long, put it through this roller and roll it into a cylinder. So this is what the rolled tube looks like. So I just need to take it off and try it for size. And so here it is uh, slid onto the tube. So I have to confess, uh, that's probably more by luck than judgment. Uh, it was five millimetres longer than it's the theoretical uh, circumference as measured with a piece of paper. And it looks like you need that extra five millimetres. Could probably shave one more mil off, off the length. But that that's fine. That is absolutely fine. I'll weld that up uh, and roll it in, you know, nice and nice and smooth. And um, that will be the that will be the connector piece to attach onto the, the long, almost two metre tailpipe. So I've now made this tube and welded it up, and you can see it's pretty good fit. So the challenge now is to work out how to turn a round tube into a square hole. It's not actually square, it's rectangular. It doesn't look rectangular, but it is. It's 28 millimetres by 29 millimetres. Fantastic. Uh, so what I've done, I've made this. It's a square rectangular thing that's basically, if I sit it in there, it's one and a half millimetre. It's 1.5 mil clearance all the way around and the idea is to form the tube over this thing so that it fits in I've got these holes punched the, the holes are the long sides so I'm going to see if I can actually turn that into something which slides into that using that and a hammer so let's see so to use a well-worn phrase sometime later we've got a square tube going through to sorry a round tube going through to a square hole. So that works uh, works well. Uh, it takes quite a lot of bashing and hammering and crimping in the vise, but the circumference of the tube is pretty much the same as the outside um, external perimeter, I suppose, of the, uh, of the hole. So it seems to work quite well. So, um, I mean, you can have another one there. So obviously gonna be very tight to each other. So probably what I'd put them in and, and weld up round this inner seam just here. So anyway, that's that. Uh, next up is what? Uh, I think I'm going to tackle the, the front elbow on the, on the manifold. So this is a 90 degree elbow, but actually what I need is about that. Well, not about that, that, which is I think 81 degrees. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick this bit of tube in here like that. I'm going to get the oxyacetylene, point it to that and attempt to bend it um, to the right angle. Now I've got to I've got to apply quite a lot of heat, make that all soft. I don't want to sort of kink it or tear it. So um, yeah, let's see how that goes. Should be a laugh. Worst case scenario, a set fire to everything that's just there. Right, let's see. So I, I bent the pipe, the tube, <coughs> and I've actually welded it on here. So, uh, and it did this, this the square end on there. So that's now, that's the first one in. So it's now when it starts to get harder. And now I'm going to have another one. Um, it's going to come out sort of like that. And obviously the tricky bit is to have it going at, at an angle here. So basically what I've done, I've made made this as a profile gauge so I can basically work out if I if I push push this on there like that it shows me what the profile is that I need to, to cut um, out of both both pipes so next step is to, to start to offer up this new one mark it up and see if I can work out where to cut it so let's see how that goes
Well, that went all right. I've now actually got two uh, um, exhaust um, pipes, yeah, exhaust pipes on now. Uh, it took a long time to, to sort of cut and fettle that, but once I've made one, I've taken a pattern of it and I'm now cutting out the hole for the next pipe. So, um, yeah, so far so good. Obviously, the, the manifold, I'm not going to weld the manifold on, manifold flange on, until all the pipes are, have been welded onto, the, onto this section. So I can adjust the angle slightly. Um, but yeah, just doing the, 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 the graft of cutting out this hole now. That's what it looks like. Uh, and I should be able to cut pretty much that line and it should just slot in, in theory. Anyway, let's see how that goes. Weekly roundup time and it's going to be short and sweet because I've been working on one thing and one thing only and that's this exhaust manifold and it's nearly finished that's the good news um it's a hell of a lot of job a lot of work um it's not quite finished i need to weld it up i need to finish fettling these and i need to that's only tack welded but basically what it does it converts the square uh exhaust port into a one and three eighths round tube and then connects through to a two inch drain pipe which will run all at the end unsilenced Ha ha ha! Um, uh, yeah, what to say? Uh, that, 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 and that are made out of elbows. Um, obviously, have to be shaped and cut to fit. And this cone is made out of a bit of two-inch pipe that's been had a segment sliced out of it. Uh, this is the segment here. Chop that segment out and then then pinched it up and made a tube. This is a connector piece here. So I can put on a different exhaust, uh, either a, I can put on a, a silenced or unsilenced. It's obviously going to be unsilenced to start off with. Uh, so uh, it's pretty much, I've got to go out now. I'm going to go and climb again now, So, uh, but I'm quite pleased to have, have got that far and welded that up. So I've also got the brazing rod. So next week is going to be finish the um, welding up the exhaust. And hopefully my long silencer, well, non-silence bit, that will turn up and it will go around and hook onto that bracket just there. Next week I'll finish that up and I, I've also got some brazing rod to, to, to build the rad. And uh, yeah, and then um, I still, I did maintain by the end of the month I will start the engine. I've got eight days, so let's see how we get on. Okay, so quick update for the diary. So the head's on. It's not actually screwed on completely, bolted down, because I might need to modify this outlet for the radiator. Uh, but the exhaust manifold's finished now. I've welded up this extra um, sleeve that goes on here, which means I can have an end pipe, which basically just will slide into there like that. And it's got a slightly got a slot, so I can put a, a bracket on there. And uh, it lines up with with the gap that um, has been hammered outside of the car, uh, and it follows its way around to to um, the bracket. Anyway, um, so the inlet manifold is on now as well. This is all welded up, and I'm turning my attention to the cooling system. So the rad, I've just soldered on the top of this rad. Uh, so all I need to do now is um, fix the bottom part change the elbow and solder that on. Uh, and then when I've done that, I can try and work out how it's going to mount in the, in the horseshoe bracket. So that's the story so far. Right, so beginning of the, the final chapter, well, not the final chapter, but the next chapter. So this is a bit of copper tubing that I've bent up just with my knee to get the right sort of line as a template. And then I can uh, use, offer it up against this bit of steel tube, which can be much harder to bend. Uh, try and get the right um, the right lines that flows around the car. So first step is to get the profile. Second step is to work out how to mount the tubing um, while I bend it, while I heat it. That's next. So the exhaust bending rate has been set up. I've basically um, screwed a piece of tubing onto the side of my woodshed. 
I've beefed up my wood shed with a diagonal brace. I've marked on here where uh, I want to heat up and bend. I've got my bit of copper tubing on the floor as a template. I'm going to get a faithful assistant to rotate this as I heat it up. Then we'll bring it around to the top and we'll push it that way. Try and bend it. Bend it like Beckham. Beads more. So after a lot of heating and bending, and then bending back again because I bent it too far, we now have uh, this straight through two inch pipe. Uh, I, over, I over bent it and then had to bend it back so it's got kind of these weird bulges in it, but I lived and I learned. Um, so it'll do for the time being. I might buy another pipe and do it and, and repeat the exercise, but I'm going to do a little slash cut on here. So that's the, that's the cut that's, that's going to have. I, I took this template from the other exhaust because uh, it's quite hard to cut a slash cut just with an angle grinder so i'll do that so i've put this slash cut on the exhaust and i've also cleaned up a bit and knocked out some of these high spots with a hammer and it actually looks all right i think so i'll probably stick with that clamped it on so uh, i did a lot of monkeying around with the carb last night um and i hope that it's going to be okay so it's basically come down to this um wheel it out the garage and start it up and if I can get any kind of reasonable tick over uh, and pick up even basic then I stand a chance of uh, driving it and see how we get on so that's it that's how I made the exhaust system for this car so I made all sorts of other things for this car and I'm going to do uh, a few more episodes going through various different aspects of the car what I did how I made it and I'm going to do a series of, of episodes about the front suspension, which I'm going to completely re-engineer. It looks quite good as it is, but there are a few shortcomings which I'm going to talk through and explain what they are and what I'm going to do about it. And then I'm going to make it. Uh, so if you're interested in any of that stuff, then hit subscribe and you'll find out about it automatically. So I think that's all for now. And thank you for watching.